we get started, we're going to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Jared if he would to lead us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another time we gather that people of my Lord and worship thee and hear from thy word, Lord. I pray to you. Bless Brother Henry now as he brings what you've given him, Lord. I pray to you give him Larry as he's out. I pray for his mother and she might help her with her hip, Lord. I pray she might bend her hip out, Lord, but that is all in thy hands. We thank you for this church here, Lord, this church in his hands on. I pray you help us continue to be a light shining in the darkness, Lord. Help us to be both as a church and individually as busy about the work you've called to do, Lord. I thank you for all of you, for us, for Christ and his sacrifice. We pray to save souls among us, Lord, that you tonight you might save a lot of souls here, Lord. We pray that you would go to now and you all the glory in our own services. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you would turn your Bibles to the book of Romans, we're going to try to read a few scriptures out of Romans 12, make maybe a comment or two, and uh, we hope that we can be a blessing to each one of you tonight. We haven't had much time to uh, study on this, but uh, of course a lot of times when I study it, it gets worse, so uh, we may be in for a good lesson tonight. So you all pray for us as we try to read and make a comment or two on the on the uh, sermon, on the uh, lesson tonight. Uh, we would like to say it's good to be back in the house of the Lord, and I'm thankful that I'm able to be able to stand up here and uh, and uh, praise the Lord. Yeah. And uh, this is something this morning, uh, this evening, that we all need to uh, be thankful for, that we can tell other people about the Lord and how that, what He's done for them. And in the, in the lesson we're going to... Uh, uh, try to read to you tonight and study is uh, verse uh, 1 of the 12th chapter it says I beseech thee or I beg you therefore brethren by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and this thing of uh, 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 therefore brethren by the mercies of God and you can you know, we say a lot of times we can't control these old bodies, and, and they are they are a, a barricade because uh, they uh, they just go every which way. But anyway, by the mercies of God, you can uh, live closer to the Lord than you do. And He said here by the uh, that you that you present your bodies a living, not a dead, but a living sacrifice. And this morning, or this evening, uh, a living sacrifice is one that you're able to tell the, uh, the people or anybody that you have a conversation with about the living God, about how that he brought life into you, and how that uh, uh, you're able to, through that mercy, present your bodies uh, into his service and to do the things that would be pleasing to him. And, that's one of the one of the things that we need to let people understand is that's why that we try to uh, testify and why we try to uh, tell people about this. So many people uh, think that you're trying to push something off on them. So many people don't understand that God loves them and that He sent others to them that because He loves them and it's, they don't understand that He died on the cross of Calvary because he loved people and that he wanted to see people uh, with him in heaven. And so when we, when we have an opportunity to, to be a, uh, uh, a service to someone and, and witness to someone, we need to realize that uh, we're, we're following in the footsteps of Jesus because Jesus was the greatest of all witnesses and uh, his final witness that he, on this earth was when he, he gave his life. And uh, what and, and the Bible tells us, uh, you know, that's the greatest thing you can do is to give your life for a brother. And so here, this he says that you should that you should present your bodies a living sacrifice, or one that is uh, a sacrifice is one that is that is doing things because that they that they love the Lord, and because you're doing this, and so many people will will ask you this day and time. 
uh, why do you go to church every Sunday? Or uh, what are you getting out of that and all this? Well, it's because we're a living sacrifice. And yeah. when, and when the, and when the uh, church assembles together, we are a part of that body. And without a whole body, a body can't do as much. And so we need to think about a living sacrifice when we come to church, just like tonight. If we're not hindered in any way, we should be here and that we should uh, uh, be a sacrifice and we should be an example to the world and people, people will watch you. And uh, if, you, if you start a habit of, of getting up on Sunday morning at nine o'clock and leaving home and getting back at one, two or three o'clock and eight, they're going on Sunday, they're gonna say, well, what's he doing? Where's he at? What's he going? And listen, it will, it, will make, it will make a point to people and you're a living sacrifice to those people and it's pleasing to God because he says here, he says, uh, here he says, uh, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. And if you do this holy and acceptable unto God and, and it is acceptable to him because that's what he wants us to do is to tell others about his loving kindness, his son that died, and the, and the, the everlasting salvation that he has to offer. And that's, that's, the, that's the testament that we should have every day in our mouth. And if we have an opportunity, we should not back back, back off. And, 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 and if people make fun of us, well, we can still go ahead and tell them anyway. And, uh, it's in their ball, it's in their court then because you've, you've presented this, this to the to people and if they don't accept it, well, uh, you've done what you're supposed to do. But if you don't, if you don't do these things and you pass them up and you're too shy or something like this, first of all, you need to get right with the Lord and ask for, for strength for this old, old fleshly body that it has because it don't want to do it but anyway that's where your strength comes from is from from god out of heaven and to be a witness for him because he says uh here that uh acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and this is uh, uh a very this is the uh, the best reason for it, it's your reasonable service. And you've heard the old expression a lot of times about it's just, it's just your reasonable service to do these things. And, and it's something that, that is pleasing to God and it's definitely, definitely good for you. More than one way because when you're pleasing to God like this, God will look on you and smile and, and, and he'll, he'll be with you and help you and you can feel a better attitude in, in within yourself because, uh, you know, I don't like to witness to someone and say, boy, I already told him, but I like to think this, that maybe what I said was a help to them, and maybe what I said will be will benefit them, and God will be pleased in it, because that's, that's what it's all about. So in verse 2, he says, and be not conformed to this world, or don't be shaped like the world is. Don't be uh, one that is haughty, or don't be one that's don't want to, if you got something uh, if that you know about the Lord, don't be stingy with it. Because listen, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people don't want to tell others about it. And, and, and even, even uh, they'll, if you run across the church of Christ, uh, a man that you, or a woman that you can witness to, they want to hold back and say, well, they don't believe that way. Well, that's no reason not to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, because we this morning know, or this evening know that, we have the truth and and the bible bears record to our our studies and our beliefs and it's true and so, so many people out there that are uh off on some things uh even on security to believe i've heard uh, people that just cannot grasp the thoughts of security to believe well it's because they're not they're not being taught right and they're not close enough to the lord to hear it and they're missing a, they're missing a great blessing because that is the that is the comfort that is the comfort of a dying soul that has been saved that is the comfort of it and you could leave this world you could say goodbye old world because i know for sure where i'm going and there's no doubt in my mind about it and uh listen the holy spirit will bear witness with you from time to time during your life and he will he will conduct you through those paths that you trod 
and and when the Lord spoke to you he will bear witness with that and show you these things and so he says here not to be conformed to this world don't have that old uh, attitude where that uh, I'm better than someone else or or there's no God or or things of this nature because listen that's being conformed to the world shaped like the world and the world don't believe in anything that's God -based. they believe in works and that's it so he said be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed or by the renewing of your mind in other words there is a thing that a saved person uh, goes through and is transformed through the the love of God and through the Holy Spirit wooing them he's transformed which is called salvation and and be, this can happen because Jesus Christ our Savior died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for the remission of sin and that sin that blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary has covered has covered that sin to where that God cannot see it because it's Jesus Christ's blood and when he looks upon the blood he cannot see anything wrong with the blood and so this that's that's a way of looking at transformed or being changed or or whatever by the, rene uh, the renewing of your, of your mind and that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and so these things are some of the things and being transformed is one of the ways for that you can it says here uh, prove what is a good that good and acceptable and perfect thing so a sinner a sinner that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior cannot accept cannot approve of the teaching of God's Word until the Holy Spirit speaks to him and so he can read it from cover to cover and there's people that will boast to you I've read the Bible through and through 15 times I know ever I read every line but listen it's just like reading a series of robot catalog uh, what they don't mean anything to them it's 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 it's, it's a bunch of words and until the Holy Spirit comes in and bears witness with that and and convicts that that soul that it's lost and convicts that soul that it needs uh salvation that it needs the lord jesus christ blood shed because he shed it for for that remission of sin listen there there's no understanding of god's word now they can they can quote it to you and and people will will get it down and they'll quote it they'll quote it and the devil will help them but listen, they don't know what they're saying, they don't know what they're telling you, and they'll try their best to use it for an argument to prove a point, if, if nothing else, that there was no eternity, that there, there was no choosing in eternity, or uh, that there was no Jesus. They'll use these scriptures any way they can to twist them around. And so, uh, this is what the, the writer Paul here is saying, that, that you be, uh, that, that uh, that you prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now he says here in verse three in the, the service of love to all. In verse three it says, "For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think." but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so, first of all, you know, so many people will throw their head back and brag and say, I've been going to church for 50 years, I've been a Christian, I've never sinned. And listen, you think that's funny. Uh, some people just chuckle about saying, uh, 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 people telling them they have sinned. But I've, I've seen people that says, I, have, I, I, I don't sin, I don't sin. Well, they've, they've been deceived because as long as this spirit is in this flesh and this flesh is living, this flesh is going to sin. And it may not be outwardly. It may be in this mind up here about some foolish thought, some ugly thought, some thought that they don't need to be thinking about. But listen, it's sinful, it's sinful flesh. But people don't understand that. They think that they can do good works and this body is pure. And, and they think, well, I'm keeping it perfect and, and I'm not seeing it. But they don't understand the body's, what the body's purpose is. 
It's just the temple of the Holy Spirit and the temple to carry your spirit around in to, until you leave it. It's your home here on earth in, in a sense, but you're going to leave this flesh and it's going to lay down and die and it's going to rot and it's going to be risen again and it's going to be glorified and you're going to come and meet with it and, and that is going to be then that you'll be a perfect being for that you can walk in the presence of the Savior Jesus Christ and be in heaven. So these, this thing here of, I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought. And so we, uh, as, as Christians, should put ourselves on the lower round of the ladder, and that's where we should stay humble, and understand that uh, God loves those with a humble heart, and uh, He He listens to them because all through the all through the Scripture, you know, Jesus talked about the poor and the lonely and and those that were uh, uh, not able to have anything, and and they didn't have no reason to have a think of themselves as highly because they knew they didn't have nothing, and Jesus. Jesus loved them, and he always spoke about the poor and all this. So here we need to think about uh, this thing of not thinking of himself more highly than they ought to think, but to, to think soberly, clearly, uh, according as God had dealt to every man uh, the measure of faith. And he gives us faith in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he says here, he said, to, to every man the measure of faith. And so when we get that, if we have that and we know it, then we ought to be satisfied. But listen, we ought to be humble, more humble about uh, our condition than we are a lot of times. So for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, and it, he's comparing this to a church. And you know this morning, or this evening, I keep saying morning, this evening, there's, there's several here tonight, and a lot of them are members of this church. And listen, everyone here has, a, has something to do with the service uh, being better. And sometimes when one is sick, one is out because of something that they can't help, listen, it, it, it takes away from the service because even like tonight, we miss Brother Larry, He's, he's not here to, to uh, tell us about, uh, the, preach the word to us. We miss him, but we understand that that's, it's not a permanent thing. And listen, Sunday, hopefully, he'll be back. And, uh, but what I'm trying to say is, as a, as a group, we need to stay together every, when we can possibly come uh, together at, at, when the meeting comes. We need to be here. And we need to uh, uh, strengthen one another. We need to encourage them, and we need to pray for them, and and get this. And you know, you know, a well oil machine runs well. And listen, when you're praying for a brother, or praying for each one here, and a lot of you know, a lot of times I know most of you do when you pray, you go right down this row and back up this way, or up this way and down this way, and all of those that have been here, all those that have left, and all of those that might need our prayers, uh, you pray for. And, and you know, that in a way is the, is the oil that keeps the church going, and that's, the, that's, that's what God blesses us. So uh, here again, uh, as many members, in verse 4, for as, as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one, the church, in Christ, and every one member one of another. And so one, we're, we're one member, but, but we're still one of another. And so we're all in the same, in the same thing, but we're all one of another. So we're, we're together in godly love, we, we're together in brotherly love, and we, we should be just like one, big pillow all the time and then when and and when when we dissolve and go we, we leave our home or go back to our home but we should come when we come together we should be like a rock and 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 and, and while we're out there we should be like little rocks 
And we should be sound and pray for one another. And the Lord will bless this church. He's blessing this church now. And, and you know, sometimes uh, people uh, outside say, well, they ain't got me in there. I don't see four or five cars. But if we're all sticking together like we should, that that sticking together can move a great load. And God knows our, he knows our needs. He knows our prayers. He knows all about us. And, and when we try to serve him, even though we're small in, in number, he, he heeds to our prayers and listens to us. And we can bless one another and we can bless other. We can, we can, we can turn things around for a lot of things if we just continue praying for it. So here having been gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, Different gifts and gifts of healing, gifts of prayer, gifts of singing, gifts of, of uh, uh, teaching. These these gifts having then different gifts, diff gifts differing according to the grace that is it given to us. Whether prophesy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministering, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. And so all of these things, these gifts that we see here, let us wait on our ministering or, or he that teacheth on teaching. So we just need to be patient and wait on these gifts because they are here in the church. They're, they're here and all we have to do is use them. And how do we use them is by asking the Lord to help us with these things. There might be someone here today that, that wants to do something greater for the Lord than they are doing. Then I say this, I say this, I say he should be praying or she should be praying. And I say this, that as the time goes on and if he could tell it to the church and let the church pray about it because a lot of times the church don't know about these things, pray for it and you'll see things happen that you didn't think would happen because there's, there's talents in this church that you wouldn't believe. There is talents that you can and we can use for the Lord. And so uh, remember these things when you pray about those that have a greater desire. A lot of times people get shy and they don't want to say, well, I'm going to try to do this because they're afraid somebody said, well, is he trying to take the church over or something like that, you know. But listen, if you do it for the love of God, if you do it because you love the Lord, be bold in it and and and, uh, and stand up for the Lord and and uh, ask help from the church because it'll happen if you'll do it. And here he says again, or he that exhorteth in verse uh, eight, or he that exhorteth or exhorteth, he that giveth, let him do it simplicity, simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation, abhor or detest that which is evil, cleave to that which is uh, teach, uh, that is cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. And so here's some of the things that we can do for one another. This is some of the, some of our, it should be some of our desires. And it says here, not slowful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience, tribulations, continuing instantly in prayer. And so all of these things the last thing he says is instantly in prayer. And we this morning, or this evening, need to remember that we're, we, we have the, the right, we have the right to go to Jesus Christ and ask him to take a prayer to God. I, I mean, it's, 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 our, it's our privilege. It's not, it's, not, it's not something that we can boast of or it's not nothing that we can say, well, I'm, you know, I'm doing this and they can't do this. But listen, that's to me is the way that that the prayer life is. That you know, and and, and of course, uh, Jesus said, when you pray, pray, Father, which art in heaven. And 
He, God, can hear our prayers through Jesus Christ because when Jesus presents these prayers to him, he looks on Jesus and he sees the blood. That's the reason why that he can come before God and present your prayers and my prayers to him because of the blood. And he sees the blood and he cannot deny the blood. That's, and we were studying some last night about the blood and all this. Listen, Jesus, uh, God cannot deny the blood because that is the living source. And so uh, he says here, uh, rejoice in hope in verse 12, patient in tribulation, continuing instantly in prayer, distri dist distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And if you don't think you'll get a blessing out of that, you try it. Someone comes up to you and says thanks to you and, 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 and acts ugly towards you. Uh, don't throw off the handle and don't let the devil get behind you and say, hey, I hit him or I'd, I'd get him back. But listen what it says here. It says, uh, Right here, bless them which persecute you. And when he says bless it, he means pray for them. And ask the Lord to, to help them to understand that you're not their enemy. And so many people this day and time think that I'm their enemy because I'll tell them about Jesus Christ. They won't come up face to face, but they, the devil is behind them, in them, around them, and, and punching them and gigging them, listening. And you know, this sounds stupid and sounds funny, but listen, that's the devil working in this world. And he, he knows just exactly how to get one of his children and all that are, are lost are his children. And, and he knows how to talk to them. And he says, hey, they're making fun of you or they're, they're, they're making out like that you don't know anything. But listen, it, and, and if they turn around and, and cuss you or whatever, don't just don't let it bother you because uh, you just pray for them. And uh, he says here, uh, bless them which persecute you. And, and, and persecuting means hurting terribly bad sometimes. But he says, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. And that's that's what we, we try to do is to uh, we for those that are that have problems and sorrows and we pray for them because uh, we like to see them get better and, and so here he says uh, be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but con condescend to men of low estate be not wise in your own concept so uh, don't put yourself up over somebody else and uh, say uh, he's a dumb bunny, he don't know nothing. Because listen, we're all God's people. We're all we're all made of God and, and, and he loves he loves those that love him. And so uh, you know, talking about uh, entertaining angels unaware. I mean you you've got to remember that. So in verse eighteen if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. And that's, that, is, that is something that if we can try and practice and learn to do, it's a whole lot harder, easier on the heart. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier on the mind. And if you can live peaceably with that person and understand their way of thinking a lot of times and, and, and try to understand them and pray for them, that's the best that's the best remedy for this laying up bed and, and rolling and coming and saying oh i wish i wish he didn't feel that way or i wish i knew what just pray for him. and so here dearly beloved in, in verse 19 fixing clothing dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay saith the lord and so this morning, this evening, you don't need to try to repay a wrong that somebody's done to you. That's what uh, the Lord told uh, Paul to write here. He says, uh, avenge not yourselves. It's not your place 
Jesus said, uh, if they slap you one, she turned the other. And that's not avenging. But the thing of it is, when you try to avenge someone, then you're you're getting you're getting in the same shape that he's in, and uh, it won't it just don't work, and it, it's not pleasing to God. So he says uh, he would repay the thing himself. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing. Thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So you can you can have an enemy that will hurt you in any way that he can. But if you're good to him, and if you're you try to help him, uh, listen, it says it's just like heaping coals of fire on his head. And so by that, the way to go is to be kind-hearted towards your enemy and uh, pray for. And be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil, evil with good. And so that's that's something this morning or this evening we have to try. We have to try to, to do is to be not overcome of evil. Don't let it get over you, and don't let it hinder you, and don't let it uh, keep you awake at night. But it says, but overcome this evil with good. Do good to them, and uh, and. and uh, <clears throat> they'll drive them crazy. It, it will. I mean, uh, in, in, in a sense, what in the world wrong with that man? I've uh, I stole something, or I broke something of his, or I, I said this about him, and he knows it, and here he is offering me something good. Uh, they can't. They can't understand it. And so, uh, it's good for you, and it's good for them, and uh, it'll give you a whole lot better night's nice rest, and you can be closer drawn to the Lord. And uh, everything will be much a much better uh, life for you if, you can, if we can practice these things. I hope that some of these things I've read, and I know we've heard them several times, uh, uh, but uh, it's always good to uh, uh, reach you and, and re, uh, uh, have a, a lesson that we've heard time and time again. And it uh, kind of brings some things back. And uh, uh, might have been a, a year or two since you heard something like this, and then in that past year or so, something's happened like this, and uh, it will kind of give you an idea of how you could have done it a little bit different or uh, that you did right and please the Lord. So we thank you for listening to us tonight. I'm glad I could come and read for you and uh, pray for us as we try uh, another time. Thank you so much.